Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Knives. It's your host Fletcher, and today we're going to talk a little chemistry. This is definitely not a video format y'all are used to. Same for me. Take me a little bit of time to figure it out. Hopefully this goes smoothly, but let's talk about chromium and steel. So we got a photo right there of some uh, just pure metallic chromium. How you would get after you refine it. Let's move on to some background. All right, so do a little bit of background. Steel is, at its very basic form, iron and carbon, right? Iron is a metal, so it's going to react with oxygen in the air uh, with water as a catalyst, right? And when you're using your knife, you know, depending on what you're using it for, you're going to be around water and anywhere on Earth, you're going to be around oxygen. So, all right, so a little bit of background. All rust reactions are an oxidation reduction reaction and this is defined as a reaction in which for example so say this is an oxygen molecule this is an iron molecule the iron is a lot bigger okay iron's going to be a lot bigger but it's got a lot more electrons it's got a lot more layers oxygen ox sorry oxygen it's going to be very small it's got a high electronegativity which means it has a tendency to hold on to its electrons and even pull electrons away from other molecules. So, so the iron and the oxygen come into contact and the oxygen wanting to fill its outer shell of electrons known as a valence shell is going to come and snap two of those away from the iron to fill its outer shell So because it's more stable that way. And oxygen is very good at doing this in iron because of its many layers of electrons is poor at fending from it. Right, so that's an example of an oxidation reduction reaction. The one that takes is known as an oxidizer, uh, oxidizer, hence oxygen. And the one that is has its electrons taken away is known as a reducer because its positive charge is reduced. Or, or sorry, the positive charge of the oxygen is reduced, thus it's the reducing agent. So, right here. I'm going to use this little pin here to show you guys. So this is a very simplified kind of rust react. Very simplified. I just kind of wrote it out. You got oxygen with a negative 2. You got iron with a plus 2. You see how they react. There's an exchange of electrons there, and they form a ionic molecule, right? Iron oxide. A similar reaction happens with rust, but... This time, water is a catalyst, so you can add H2O in here, actually. Okay. And the H2O is going to be on both sides of the equation. When it's on this side here, it's going to actually going to act as a hydrate, which means you put a dot here, and you're going to put that H2O right next to it, meaning it's actually binded into the molecule. Over here, it's going to be one of the reactants, so if you do this plus sign here. Part of that moisture is what causes the rust because the hydrogen molecule interacts with the iron and the iron is more reactive than the hydrogen, meaning it reacts with the oxygen, thus replacing it, right? And so this oxygen is really from, say, like moisture in the air. And to show proof that, I have an activity series here. So we're on to this next slide, the activity series. I'm going to give you a second to read it, and then I'm going to annotate here. All right, so we have chromium here, the star of the show. We've got iron here, right? So if you take a look at this, this is the ease of oxidation, meaning the it is more reactive. So you see this hydrogen here? That's what it would have been in your water molecule. Iron is what replaces that. All right. Now, if you see chromium, it actually says it's more reactive than iron. Now, you might be thinking, well, that can't be right. They use it in stainless steels, right? So if they're using it in stainless steels, why, why is it more reactive? All right. So when chromium reacts, it reacts so quickly that it forms about like a one atom or so layer of chromium oxide, which means because it reacts so fast, it kind of forms like a shell around itself. Which is why you don't see chromium just rusting away and why you have chromium oxides dropping compounds and such. It's actually very easy to make and somewhat hard as well. 
That's how it forms that layer. Aluminum does the same thing on here. I'm pretty sure anodization is uh, just forcing a hard coat of uh, aluminum oxide on the outside. I could be wrong about that. If I am, just let me know down below. But zinc, too, I mean, what does zinc use? Galvanized nails, right? So the reason they use these in there is because the chromium is going to take the place of iron, right? It's going to kind of give its electrons up in the place of iron, which means that your steel, right, which is mainly iron, from relatively, you know, there's going to be eight times more iron per weight, by weight, right, than um, chromium. So why does so little chromium protect so much iron? Well, because the chromium is going to give up more of its electrons, right, to take place of the iron in the reaction, which is part of the way that it actually keeps your metal from corroding and rusting, all right? So we're going to move into some kind of uh, real-world examples of this. So just real quick, I'm going to hop over to this next slide. See this reaction here? So we were just looking at that activity series. So imagine that that CR, right? Imagine that that hops in there and that the electrons from the CR are actually going to form to give their electrons to the oxygen to perform, to prevent rust, right? So this is how that chromium is helping to prevent that rusting is it's actually being the reducer in this instance and not the iron. It's also uh, to showcase this. So actually, before we get into that, it's part of the reason that after a while, your stainless steels eventually rust is all the electrons from that chromium have already reacted with the oxygen. And now it's already reacted with all the chromium. So what's next on that activity series is that chromium is the uh, iron. Seriously, right below chromium. All right, so a real-world example of this is going to be galvanized nails. Galvanized nails, everyone knows them, they're used in construction. They're zinc-plated nails. So galvanized nails, as you know, after a while, will start to rust. And so to kind of showcase this, let's go back to that activity series. All right, here we are in that activity series. Zinc is right here. And iron is right here, right? This is what your nails are. So eventually, you are going to run out of zinc, and your nails are going to start to rust. So that's why galvanization works is, you know, it'll last for, you know, a long time. You know, these reactions are instantaneous. They just, you know, could be slow, could be quick. Also, depending on how much zinc's on the outside, right? So eventually, you run out of zinc, right? Well, there's no chromium in a nail, so what does it go to next? Iron. You know, there's no cobalt. There's no nickel. There's no tin. There's no lead. Hydrogen comes from the moisture in the air, right? So it's not going to – I mean, it can react with itself, but that's a completely different field of chemistry, dealing with acids and bases. And all of these below here are safe from reacting with moisture. So all it leaves is that iron after that's used up. And that is why it is a stain less steel, not a stain proof steel. Because eventually you're, you know, with a high amount of chromium in solution, eventually it's gonna have to jump back to the iron. That is why percentage chromium in solution matters. That's why MagnaCut works, is because it's not going into carbide. That 10.75%, right? We're just going to round it up. We're just going to say 10%. Most of that's free chromium in solution, which is why it is more corrosion resistant than, say, a steel like S30V. Why it's more corrosion resistant than, say, 20CV. You know, 20CV, I think, what is it, something crazy like 18 to 20 percent chromium something like that a certain percentage of that is going into carbide which means it's not free in solution its electrons are already in an ionic bond with carbon right that means it can't part 
it can't give its electrons to oxygen to protect it from rust. That's why free chromium in solution matters. That's why when you're reading Knife Steel Nerds and he says free chromium in solution, that's why that matters. That is the chromium that can make the stain steel uh, stain less, right? Stain less. But eventually your stainless steel is a rust unless it is a different kind of alloy, right? Like a cobalt based or those tend to have prolonged life in the way that they corrode with oxygen and react with oxygen is a little different. And there's no iron in there too, right? Those, uh, what are they? It's cobalt. They use them in drill bits sometimes too. I forget what they call it. Uh, dendritic cobalt. That's what it is. Dendritic cobalt. So yeah, that's why chromium works. It takes the place of iron in our normal oxidation reaction. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, if you guys have anything to add, leave it down below. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Real quick, these are my sources I used, mainly just the photos. A lot of this came from actually my College Chem 152 class. This is actually something we covered somewhat extensively in acid and bases, in which acid and bases would be reactive due to the activity series. But as always, thanks for watching, guys. Stay sharp.